where this all goes, you know, and I wonder what your perspective is, because I, I feel like the COVID crisis and the pandemic was uh, just a perfect storm mm. of isolation, fear, yeah. anxiety, all these things, and authoritarianism, the rise of control by these governments that decided what you could and couldn't do as far as work and where to go, and all these things, they also exaggerate this feeling of helplessness that people already had they they mm -hmm. pumped up the anxiety to uh, these people sure. most there's a lot of people in 2018 and 19 that were already fucked yeah exactly what are that what about them now those are they're barely hanging on by threads now yeah, yeah like i wonder what your perspective is in terms of where is this headed like do you have a prediction do you look at it and can you uh separate yourself from it and and observe it as a pattern and see some sort of clear direction that it's headed i don't think there's any clear direction i think that the uh the atomization is going to be much worse than anyone realizes much much worse and the atomization not just of views but of information of facts you know um having different views is so last century you know we all have different facts now mm. um and actually if you think of the last few years like a family tree like just of I don't know people we know in common. Uh, you like start there, of like vaguely in the same space, and you go down and you go like, let's say COVID, then George Floyd, then uh, Afghanistan, and yeah. then Ukraine, and you take that like almost nobody in that family tree of things ends up in the same place on everything. Right, and some of them end up in such a different place that it's just I, I don't know how I can reach them. Apart from, as I say, night, never, never shutting the door entirely. But, um, th and there are people now who just like they have their thing, and that's, and they're in, in a kind of unreachable place. And I think that's, um, that's very likely to be what the future is going to be like for a long time. I had a late, late friend, Deepak Lal, a wonderful Indian-born economist, who I remember towards the end of his life, he used to say, you know, everyone says Douglas that the era of, um, of um, atheism. Will just sort of continue he said it won't we're, we're entering an era of polytheism mm. everybody has their own gods uh, and that i think that's true um and it's not just they have their own gods they have their own obsessions and they have their own versions of everything and how they got there and what they're meant to be doing and um and so i think it's gonna be a huge a cacophony i mean what we have at the moment is a cacophony but it's going to get worse and worse. I mean, let me give you one quick example. It's a kind of personal one. But I found in recent years, even before we were kind of locked away, when, you, when I did public events, I found it increasingly hard to prepare for them. And in part, that's because, uh, I don't know if you experience this, my experience is that the older you get, the harder like things like public speaking become. And it's exactly the opposite of what people think. They think it must get easier and easier. And I find it gets harder and harder because, first of all, you know all the things that can go wrong. It's like comedians who mm. have heard all the hecklers and get more and more nervous about going out on stage. But the other reason is that I, I became aware in recent years, I, I was less and less confident that I knew what my common reference points were with the audience. Hmm. Like if I mention a certain person, do they know what I'm talking about? If I mention this person am I, or this event, have I totally lost them? And and the answer, I think, increasingly is yes. It's very hard today to know what your common reference points are with, an, with 100 people even in a room. Um, you've got to, you would have to work out, for instance, uh, even just on mundane stuff like who, won, who wins elections, you'd have to work out roughly, like, well, who am I speaking with like, about that? Does, do people think this happened and that happened? Are there people who think this is the case and that's the case? And that's even before you get on to just whether they know anything about the past. And so I feel that atomization very, very strongly to the extent that when somebody says something that I don't expect them to know about or like a reference point I also have and share, you know, I'm thrilled. I think, good, it's like we'd, we, we've drunk from the same well. And increasingly you can't rely on that. You, ha you don't know if you've drunk from the same well whether you have the same background of knowledge and references and and whether you've got 
anything in common other than just the very basic starting point of being two human beings. And I think that's going to get worse and worse. Um, there are going to be people who just won't speak to people because they didn't share their views on something. Yeah. And they're going to drill down and down and down. This, this uh, French writer I'm very fond of, Michael Welbeck, predicted that at the beginning of the 2000s about the atomized society. I and mean, it's just, it's, it, we are living through it and it's going to get so much worse. And that's why, that's why the only way to reverse that is to try to think of things that you can agree on. 